Uh, I'm curious, you held Notre Dame to 36% from the floor, uh, forced 13 turnovers, 10 of those were, were on the spot. He's right here. Good morning. Morning. Uh, first up today, well, first, if you have a question, go ahead and use the raise hand tool. Uh, Connor O'Neill is the first one to raise his hand, so you've got first dibs. Go ahead. Steve, good morning. Um, just basic, uh, what did you want to get done over the last week or so, and were you able to do as much as you wanted? Yeah, Connor. I mean, I think first thing we want to do is get a little rest. Um, we took Tuesday and Wednesday off. They got back to school and got off their feet. Now, they, they still go in, <clears throat> excuse me, and work out, but not just me grinding them. Um, you know, I thought Damari was trying to get him a few more minutes, can probably get him up to 18 to 20 if we can now, possibly. Um, you know, <clears throat> this time of year, sickness kind of creeps into the team. We've got a couple guys sick, so we try to get, you know, get through that. And then we just had some really good practices. We practiced Thursday. And Friday, really hard. <clears throat> we took Saturday off. We went uh, last night. We'll go today, typical prep, and uh, and Tuesday before we go to uh, to Pitt. It, it is the longest um, time I think I've ever had off in league play. <clears throat> We've had some weird <clears throat> some weird stoppages this year. Um, we didn't get that. We had the first buy in the ACC, but we weren't told that until you know. September. So we couldn't schedule that Saturday that we had off in the early December. You know, we had finals. We had, we had the break, uh, around Christmas and now we've had this one. So, um, you know, it's still, uh, so we got to deal with it, but I, I thought we took good advantage of it. And I know Jow was cleared the last two games, but you weren't able to get him in there. It's, is he looking better than he did, or is it just a matter of you, you need to find a spot for him to work him in? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I, I don't think he's probably where he needs to be uh, phys physical condition-wise. And, you know, he hasn't practiced in so long. Um, you know, it's been hard for him in practice. And so, you know, how I, he's not going to play. Uh, any of them, None of them are going to play unless they practice well. And so uh, that's kind of where that's at right now. Go next to Cam lemons Bro. Go ahead, Cam. Steve, I mean, obviously you guys have been pretty spectacular at home, but going in a pit and just kind of the rest of the schedule, you know, what's kind of the focus and the message to getting over that hump away from the Joel? We got to finish games. <clears throat> We've been ahead in, uh, in the second half and all all three of those losses. Um, obviously, we fell apart at uh, Carolina, you know, 14 minute mark probably um, that was more defensive transition than anything. I thought the uh, two games, NC State, Florida State, we fouled too much, um, fouled way too much at you know the last 10 minutes of the game, put them on the line. So I think you know a couple of things. I got, I think we didn't have tough enough offensive possessions in the second half against Carolina to get good shot quality and not lead them into transition. So I think we have to have better, tougher. Uh, Offensive possessions, and what does that mean? I think that's more ball movement, more body movement, more exchanging. Uh, when we're setting, when we're in our sets, setting more physical screens, setting more physical ball screens. Uh, I think we whiff a lot, you know, and so I think that helps us uh, in in the half court on on offense. You know, we tweaked a couple of things defensively, but schematically, not not really not much or anything at all on that. You know, I think it's just more not fouling. And uh, we we tend to foul a lot more on the road than we do at home, and so that's something we got to do a better job of keeping them off the free throw line. Just following up with that, with the toughness part of it, is that is the onus more so kind of on you guys as coaches, on you know the leadership of the team, just kind of making sure the game plan is being executed. Just kind of where does that who does that really fall on right now? I think it's both. <laughs> you know, they got we got to do a better job of coaching. They got to do a better job of executing. Uh, go next to Jerry DePaula. Go ahead, Jerry. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Steve, I was just uh, you just answered the question I had uh, with that question a minute ago. But uh, what what strikes you most about Pitt? You know, when when you watch the video the last couple of days. Well, you know, I think Jeff's done a really good job of recruiting. You know, in the portal and in high school, I, I think Lowe and Carrington are two of the better high school freshman guards in the country. And it's not just the scoring. I'm most impressed with their ability to take care of the ball. They have a pretty much a two-to-one assist turnover ratio 
uh, in the league, and they make big shots. Um, you know, you could tell their coaches' kids, um, both of them, and I think they're really good. I, you know, Henson's one of the best three point shooters in the in the country. Those shots he made against Duke were were just insane, and I thought Duke probably guarded him really well in five of the seven, but his offense was better than their defense. Um, you know, Leggett and Austin bring toughness and size to their perimeter. Um, I think they really move their feet well. Leggett could score inside out. He could take you down in there off the dribble. He could shoot threes. You know, and then Frederico gives them rim pressure, rim presence. He gives them a, a lob threat. And then the uh, and then the young big uh, Diaz Graham. You know, he's my worst nightmare. He's a five man that can shoot threes. And so um, they've won two of their last three. You know, they could have easily won three in a row here. I think they're playing really well. And again, I think it goes back to our league again. Our, our league's really good. Um, you know, they may not have the conference record that they want right now, but they're really good. And I think that credit goes to Jeff of, of uh, putting together a team that um, is connected and um, got some two young, really good young freshman guards and some good transfers. Uh, go back to Connor O'Neill. Mm. Steve, assist rate hadn't been all that high for you guys this year, um, and, and it hadn't really seemed to affect your offense that much, but at Carolina, it was only three assists on 21 field goals. Is that even – is that an outlier? That number need to uh, get better, obviously. I mean, because how many assists did Carolina have? They had six or seven, I think. Yeah, I don't think it I think it's a product of the way we're defended, a lot of it. Um, yeah, yeah, Connor, don't get me wrong. I, I I do think we need to come off the ball some off the drive. I'm talking about when we get in there off two feet and not take a tough two sometimes. It needs to come out. No, no question. Um, you know, we can always get we can always get better at that. We do have guys though, you know, that can score off the dribble. And so that, you know, the assist rate's not always gonna be as high. But yeah, I you know, against uh, it's sometimes it's how you're defended, right? Against Louisville, we had we made 18 threes and had 20 some assists because it's the way they defended us. And so it's going to kind of get it's going to kind of go from game to game. And you, that wasn't a, that was that Carolina's not that kind of game. It's a one on one game. You got to beat your guy off the dribble, or you got to get him behind the play and beat him. And we couldn't do it. And so yeah, our assist our assist uh, rate was down. I'll go to David Teal. Steve, you mentioned the quality of the league. Is that reflective in the fact that road teams are winning 47% of league games? Well, way to make me feel bad, Dave. Good job. <laughs> um, uh, well, That's good what morning. I'm here for, Coach. Good Monday morning to you too, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think sometimes that really kind of shows the depth of your league, you know, but then again, it depends how people spin it. Yeah. You know, I know as a coach how hard it is. But, you know, some people may say a certain win in another league, if you lose at a certain place, oh, that's a terrible loss. And if you lose it on the, at home in another league, that's a that's a great loss because it's a great league. It, it's all kind of BS. Um, you know, so I think our league's really good. I've said it, but it's that really hasn't changed. I think it's, the proof's kind of in the numbers, too. I mean, you know, ever since they've gone to this metric with the net, we still are winning – something like 63, 63% of our NCAA tournament games, and we have way less bids. If you look at the four years before the net when we had RPI, you know, we had – I think we've had 24 bids since net, and when we – the last four years of RPI, we've had – we had 31. So we're down like seven bids, but we won 67% of our games during that time, where the Big Ten had – 36 bids in the last cent in the net and they got they've won 51 percent of their games and now when we went to rpi when we we're going rpi they only had 25 and they won more games i don't know i think a lot of it's the metric too um how the all of a sudden now we're uh you know we're choosing teams and i also think it comes i don't think we should be playing 20 league games because what has happened is a lot of these leagues are cooking their numbers early by playing poor non-conference schedules and smashing teams and building their efficiencies. So what happens is when you do, when you got a high net in December and that last net is determined before the end of the non-conference, it's hard to bring it down because everybody's playing everybody and keeping the games pretty close. 
And I think us playing 20 league games doesn't help that because we got some quad four quad games in our league that aren't really quad four games. They're just hard, hard games to win. You're not blowing those teams out. And so I think we're better off going back to 18, in my opinion. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Steve, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you again All next right. week.